A popular college football Twitter account recently said that Utah is BYU's little brother. We're going to talk about that blasphemous take on today's Locked On Utes. You are Locked On Utes, your daily podcast on the Utah Utes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and thank you for making Locked On Utes your first listen every single day. We are available on all platforms, including YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. If this is your first time listening to our show, make sure you guys like and subscribe. We'd love to interact with you guys in the comments. And based on the topic of this episode, I expect there to be a lot of interaction in the comments. <laughs> My name is JT Wister Sill, former intern inside the University of Utah Athletic Department. Excited to be joined by Sammy Moore of Ute Zone. And Sammy, you know, sometimes during off season content time, you never know what's going to pop up. And uh, Big Game Boomer is someone who likes to manufacture your comment uh content excuse me and he put out his list of the big brother little brother schools in kind of in college sports and he listed the, which is it's a very interesting list we're going to dive into last he listed byu as utah's big brother so he said byu's mm-hmm. big brother utah was the little brother honestly originally just on the list i probably was just going to let it slide and not have done an episode on it but then he decided to go on the air he went on benjamin criddle's show at espn 960 and he defended it and i want to read the full quote so everyone can understand what we're talking about and here's the full quote on why he has byu as big brother to utah he says you have to look at the full body byu is a national brand utah is a regional brand who's won a natty byu won one utah hasn't who's won a heisman byu Who won the last time they played? BYU. In my opinion, Utah is scared to play BYU and would rather play SEC teams and miss out on playing one of the best college rivalries in the country. And when you add those things up, BYU is the big brother to Utah. We're going to dissect every inch of that because I think there are so many things that he has twisted and not brought up in order to prove his point correctly. Um, I I completely disagree with the take. Sammy, what is your reaction to that? It's uh, (laughs) it's just – it's – I think that I think there's a double standard mm-hmm. with some of the stuff he does, mm-hmm. um, especially like talking about body well, of work and stuff. Well, really and quick, like, to say, like he said on June 15th, which I forgot when he published the Big Brother Little Brothers. On June 15th, he published the best team in each state for football, and, and it was Utah, Utah over BYU. So. It was, yeah. It's out. it's the it's the double sta- oh Big Brother Little Brother. Uh, per just go- just just scrolling through his Twitter account presently. Mm-hmm. Um, was June 19th mm-hmm. is when he did it. And he put BYU's big brother, Utah's little brother. That is, uh, that's questionable. You And then like his like response when someone was like, it looks solid except for Utah, BYU. Utah's definitely big brother. And someone, he, he responded, he said, Utah is scared to play BYU. That's, they're soft and pathetic. Which we can, the we fact can... that Utah players were also quote retweeting that, saying that that's a bunch of BS is also very funny to me like i thought terrell burgess was saying stuff like that Mm -hmm. i can't remember who else but it's just i don't get it like i understand we're at that time of the year where it's like things are dry (laughs) but to say that like a team that has made it to a new year's six bowl more recently than byu has played in any bowl game of any substance Mm -hmm. is little brother it's kind of it's kind of messed up also how many how many new year's six trophies just be what you have yeah last time i checked they don't have any i don't i, I think you're right so no, I'm, I'm with you and this is why i'm excited <sighs> so is we're going to dive in there are so many things even and you just said like we can talk about and dive into so let's just dive into it kind of quote by quote and go into the go into each of the takes he said overall because as big games boomer said you have to look at the full body of work so let's do that a little bit so he said byu is a national brand utah is a regional brand first of all as someone who has lived Fake. at multiple places over the country in general, people don't, if they, especially now with the state of the current Utah football program versus BYU, people would much rather, if you would ask fan bases, which team would you be more scared to play? Everyone would say they'd be more scared to play Utah based on the team that just won back to back Pac 12 championship. We're talking mm-hmm. about what they're operating at currently. And we are also talking about in this big brother, little brother list, we are talking about current things because he has Oregon as the little brother to Oregon State, which once again, I like what Oregon State is doing, but the same logic would apply so that's where i just don't understand like i said the 
criteria gets interesting here. And in fact, um, he did, like we said, he said BYU is a, is a national brand. Utah's a regional brand. As I said, everyone would rather play BYU of Utah. Um, in an article that Sports Illustrated's Pat Ford wrote back in the summer of 2022, he developed what he called a Power Five uh, desirability rating. Utah ranked higher than BYU in football in their football ranking overall. In academics, was the one place BYU was slightly higher in. All sports, BYU was a little higher, but especially when we narrow it back down to football, attendance, Utah was higher. And what he's talking about in terms of national brand viewership, Utah was higher in that statistic. So even that right there. And then if you're like, okay, well, that's the list that's outdated. That was 2022, right? Well, if we take 2023 into consideration, yeah. Sandy, I think it looks pretty good for Utah after they won back-to-back Pac-12 championships going to back to 22 and 20 or 21 and 22. They beat USC, a top 10 team, not once, but twice. And they were played in the Rose Bowl. End of the season, a highly ranked team once again. What happened to BYU? Sure, they beat Baylor. But after that, the Arkansas loss at home. Uh, East Carolina, Liberty, Notre Dame on a neutral field in which you were the closer team. Now, I know the Irish travel well, but still, this is where, mm -hmm. once again, just proven that if BYU is a national brand, Utah is not. The Utah brand is definitely in a better place nationally right now than BYU's is. Well, and another 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 way to look at that also is if you look at it from a, a recruiting standpoint, there's different states that Utah is going into and grabbing players from and bringing oh. them into the program, which, again, in my opinion, goes for that national brand. That is not a regional brand. That is a national brand. If you can go into almost any single state and get a kid to come play football in the state of Utah, mm. which is to a lot of outsiders is considered just a flyover state or like a state you shouldn't live in because there's nothing to go he do here. That should say something about Utah's national brand mm. that they're able to get like these, these, these good players into the state and, and getting them on the field. Utah's beating them in in-state recruiting, like hands yes, down. Are. And it's just, it's, I don't know. It's just frustrating because <laughs> it's like, it. it's just so frustrating because how is Utah not a national brand? Like there's also tweets of like Stuart Mandel and like all of these other media pe media personalities when Utah was at the Rose Bowl last year saying the Utah fans are rabid. They always turn out for this Rose Bowl game. Oh, oh, like if that's not like a national brand that you can fill up your section of the Rose Bowl and then possibly need a second allotment of tickets is I, if that's not national branding, I don't know what is. Yeah, we're like I said, we're talking about viewership numbers. We're talking about all who is it the better team. These are the things that factor into it because, yeah. like I mentioned, you just it seems like Big Game Boomer is trying to do both here a little bit, where he wants to take in some of the recent stuff and then some of the history as well. Because and we're and you know what, we're, we're gonna take a break first. We could keep going on this. We're gonna come back into this in just a moment. But first, want to talk to you guys a little bit more about our friends at Bird Dogs. Bird Dogs stretchy khaki shorts are designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and leg giving me a truly sculpted look bird dog shorts the shorts do the exact same thing as lululemon but they fit way better they fit way better than regular shorts and are made of a stiff restricting cotton bird dogs fix this issue by inventing cloud knit fabric that looks just like khakis but stretches so you get a way slimmer fit without having to sacrifice movement bird dogs use anti-stink sweat wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry all day long i use my bird dogs all the time whether it's recording this podcast taking my dog for a walk hanging out with friends and family doing whatever bird dogs are my preferred short of choice and now they can be your preferred short of choice as well because you can go to birddogs.com slash locked on college for a free yeti style tumbler with your order that's birddogs.com slash locked on college for a free yeti style tumbler you won't want to take your bird dogs off we promise you so once again make sure you guys go to birddogs.com slash locked on college for that free yeti style tumbler with your order sammy keeping it going here um when we kind of left off we said it's just kind of interesting to me how he, big game boomer has chosen to take some recent things like he'll be like well byu beat utah the last time they played but then he also goes back in the history and then goes byu as a natty byu as a heisman Let, let's dive into that a little bit more he's byu does have a natty but that was back in 1984 so yeah. by that logic, does that make the Nebraska's, the SMU, and I know SMU got hit with violations, but like all of these old college programs that are nowhere near the position oh, yeah. that they used to be of prominent, does that all of a sudden, well, they have stuff that some of the recent powers don't, does that make them their big brother? No, we live in a, no. this is a recent list. This is what this yeah. should be about is who is right now considered big brother and little brother. And I, once again, I just have a hard time believing if you asked anyone who they would rather play between as a fan base, like which game would be tougher if you played Utah or you played BYU. Everyone's saying Utah. And we mentioned the, the national championship thing 
um, as well. Uh, let's just bring up, I mean, the all-time history has got to matter between these two teams, right? It's Utah, mm-hmm. 62 wins, BYU, 35, four ties between them. And another thing Big Game Boomer brings up at the Heisman thing, the Heisman is an individual award. And yeah. BYU has been in, yes, there's multiple times where they've been second, third. But once again, that also occurred back in the 90s. And that was the early 90s when they won it with Detmer. And before that, it was some of the 80s and the other times they were finalists mm-hmm. overall. But you have one Heisman win. This is not like USC where it's like, come here and you can be a quarterback who wins. Yeah. They have consistently done that. Come to Alabama, you can win a Heisman. They have consistently done that. So once again, just using national championships and Heisman and some of these other more recent, some of those older stats to me don't carry relevance when we're talking about who is big brother, little brother today, especially when those things that happened occurred so long ago, Sammy. Well, and like, again, Utah has a more recent number one overall draft pick Mm-hmm. And Heisman, like Heisman finalist than BYU does. Yeah. And Alex Smith. Mm-hmm. You also have Tyler Huntley who made it pretty far in the Heisman voting as well. Yep. So it's like you have those, you have, it's not, and it's just like, the fact of the matter is, is like, has Utah come home with that hardware? No. But Utah, <sighs> I'm trying to figure out how to phrase this without <laughs> setting more people off because this is good. I'm trying, because it's topic, just, It's topic is going to in general regardless. And I, I'll say okay. this, I don't even... I just want to say this and I'll let you continue. I don't love the big brother, little brother thing. Like, I am not someone I wouldn't make a list like this. I do have a lot of respect for BYU. I wish that Utah mm-hmm. played them each year. We're going to talk about that whole scheduling thing that Big Game Broomer brought up in a second. But just in general, I do think this list, like, this is the kind of stuff it creates is this dissension. You have to put one down to put another up. Mm-hmm. And it's just if we're forced to pick who's big brother, little brother, that's what leads us to saying Utah. But uh, continue what you mm-hmm. were saying. Well, and I think I think something that's good, like, for, personally for me, I'm interested to see how BYU is going to do in the Big 12. I'm interested to see how this develops because it could get to a point where BYU is in a position that Utah's in right now where they're dominating the Big 12. They're Mm -hmm. winning championships. They're going to New Year's Six Bowl games. They're doing all these things. But if you look in like the, like from, for my lifetime, my, my 24 years on this earth, I've seen BYU beat Utah maybe two, three times. It's, it's since 2000, it's 14 and six. Utah's beaten BYU. Yeah. So six mm-hmm. times since I have been on this earth. A lot of those BYU. really young too. Early 2000s. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's so, mm-hmm. and like, that's the thing is the, the younger generation now is growing up with the Utah dominance. Mm-hmm. Just like people grew up with Utah men's basketball being dominant in the nineties. And now it's not dominant right now. But it's not to say that it's not going to go back to that way. That's like BYU in the 80s. BYU in the 80s was like the pinnacle of football. Yeah. And then in the 90s, it kind of took a dip. And then it took a dip again into the 2000s. Like, Or it was Mountain West was like hit or miss. Some years they were good. Some years mm-hmm. they weren't. But then the whole independence thing, I think the independence thing just, just threw it off. Because BYU could be in a position where Utah is right now. Mm-hmm. Is it? Are they going to be in that position that year one in the Big 12? No, they're not going to be. To me, in all of my years of living, Utah's big brother. If you have to put a, yep. ter- if you have to put that term on it, mm-hmm. because I've seen one of my most vivid memories is the fifty-four to ten game. Like that yep. was one of my like first football memories that I can still consciously remember. Um, and so I just, it's just, it's just frustrating because also like, if you look at like in the common draft era. Utah's had more players drafted. Utah's had higher players drafted. Utah's had players that have stayed in the league longer. Like, there's just, there are so many statistics that are more measurable now than back then. Mm -hmm. Especially, like, if you look at that national title that BYU has, Washington should have been a national title. Like, Mm -hmm. should have been playing for that national championship game. It shouldn't have been Michigan. It should. It should have been. It should have been BYU Washington. It shouldn't have been BYU Michigan. Michigan was like six and six, I think. Yeah. And they put were playing twelve and BYU at the time. Like that. That that is another reason why I think that they're that nineteen eighty four should be looked at through like a different type of lens because the situation that they were in is just it's it's kind of like if if. Alabama it, to your point you just wouldn't play a six and six team in the national okay. championship yeah it's like if play. Alabama played Florida last year like if Alabama and Florida yeah. met in the national championship yeah. or like who was undefeated last year oh or Georgia Georgia let's say it's Georgia Florida in the national championship game I know they're in the same conference but just like record like it's just it's yeah. just it's just it's weird and I think that's 
that that national championship needs to be looked at through a like a like different lens instead mm-hmm. of like a BYU being like ha 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 we have a national title you don't it's like mm-hmm. you need to look at like how that season worked and the fact that you mm-hmm. shouldn't have been playing Michigan mm-hmm. you should have been playing Washington yeah and you just speak about looking at things through a different lens let's look back at the 2021 game that most recent mm-hmm. victory that BYU has over Utah that was not the best version of that Utah team we saw that season. No. Utah ended the season higher ranked with Cam Rising there when Cam Rising switched. And please don't say, well, we beat them once, we could beat them again. All those things. Look, maybe you would have. The quarterback is the most important position. We've talked about that time and time again. Cam Rising starting instead of Charlie Brewer in that game would have made a huge difference. And once again, at, when those two teams were playing at their best that season, Utah was the better team. So had they met in a bowl game rather than, let's say, Utah when they got in the Rose Bowl, I absolutely think Utah would have beaten BYU. And I don't think that's wrong to say because, once again, Utah finished the season ranked higher than BYU mm-hmm. as they did there. In fact, we're going to talk about some of the playing history of these two, yeah. team, two teams in a moment. But first, I do want to go back a little bit and just talk about a couple more things. I mentioned. Can I add something really Yes, you, Yeah, for sure. Um, also, if you just look at, like, roster breakdown, like, Utah's roster was much more talented. Yeah, they're much more talented that that year, and I think I think we all know what happened with the Brewer situation when he just like said like, "Hey, I'm done, bye," and yeah. just left. So I think that um, I think if 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 Harding or not Harding, if Ludwig and Wit could go back in time, Cam would have been the starter from day one. Oh, absolutely. There's one, no one, way. One, there's one. no way Brewer comes even in. Maybe maybe he comes in. Maybe he's a backup or. Like you just, you just like, you just ride with Cam because like, it's just, it's just, it's, it's just frustrating because I, like that, I want, I, to a certain extent, I want Utah to play BYU again, just so we can, like, if Utah wins, that BYU fans will just shut up about like Mm -hmm. that win. Because at the end of the day, also Utah was by the end of that season, Utah was playing a lot better of competition Mm -hmm. And a lot like better like teams that were playing a lot higher level of football than BYU was because that independent schedule that year was not good. If I remember it correctly, it was not good at all. It was not as bad as that 2020 COVID season that they had like team like wise, but that 2020 game like that, that, that 2021 season was not my favorite BYU schedule. I will say, but oh, and- yeah, you're and you're absolutely right. Like you said, especially based on schedule and who they played and everything. And speaking of scheduling, actually, I do. We'll dive in the schedule in a second. I just want to say this really quick. The whole notion to like BYU won the last time they played. I, I just don't understand when you're talking about a big brother, little brother thing, how you can then exclude the fact that Utah had won the previous night. In a row. That's where it just seems like mm-hmm. that's a serious omission. Something you have to mention. It, it's literally like, I mean, for example, that's like if I beat my brother in one game of basketball and I'm like, I am better than you. It's like, well, I won the other night. Like how you, in mm-hmm. other, any other world of life, it's like, well, I won the last one we played, but it's like, well, what happened every other single time yeah. we played? And once again, like we said, if you look at overall, how the seasons have gone for Utah, Utah has finished their seasons better than BYU. Why you in general and the well, final and thing oh yeah what were you saying the, lo- the longest streak on either side has been nine games mm-hmm. if utah let's say if byu would have won 10 games in a row then like maybe you say like oh yeah byu had the better of us for like a little bit of time or oh, if yeah. utah if utah wins that 2021 game then utah has 10 in a row so mm-hmm. it's like and it's not like it's it's a situation where it's like an utter beat down. Like it hasn't been like one of those one-sided rivalries where it's 55 to five or whatever, or 55 to like one in Mm -hmm. all time history or whatever. Like if you look at it, the eighties were dominated by BYU. Mm -hmm. The two thousands have been dominated by Utah. Absolutely. The nineties were like mix hit or miss. Mm -hmm. Like it was like going back and forth a little bit, but the eighties were BYU's the two thousands have been Utah's like, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just common sense. And it's also how, like how the, how tides are turning, how rosters are built, how schedules are built, what each team is doing. And it's just, cause Utah has been, Utah has been very like, I don't want to say adept, but they've been really welcoming to changes in college football. They have been. And, and like, they've been. Mm-hmm. like very, they have been a lot more like accommodating to college football changes than I think BYU has. But again, mm-hmm. that's a hot take. Um, BYU fans, if you want to attack me, go for it. If you factor in other sports, then maybe you say BYU's big brother overall. Mm-hmm. But like, 
if you're talking this, just this football, football only, because once again, he has South Carolina over Clemson, like that, and that's just that South Carolina. So... Beat him. Yeah, that's just because, and that's just because South Carolina beat him more recently. Like that's his reason. Well, and Oregon and State more... beating Oregon, they beat him, and said. now Oregon State's big brother. It's like and look at, and look at the fashion that game happened to. All the all respect in the world for Oregon State for winning it, but you can't watch that game and go, oh yeah, if they played ten times, like Oregon State was obviously winning more. That was a very strange game. That, but that game was fun yeah. to watch. That it game was, was great, fun, fun to fun, fun, watch. Fun, fun. And I think that, like, I, I just, I'll let you, just... yeah, I'll let, I'll let you collect it for a second. I want to finish out uh, two more things on what he said. Number one, he said that um, he talked about that Utah is scared to play BYU and rather play SEC teams. Fake. Well, number one, the SEC team that they're playing is better than BYU. The Florida Gators football program, as of recently, has been in a better position mm -hmm. than BYU. Now, I have no idea how Florida's going to do, like, this coming season. This is where it could be a weird thing. But, like, ask They were 6-6 six and six last year, and everyone right. thought they were going to run the table with Anthony Richardson. <laughs> exactly. A ask anyone, though, who is a better football program. They would tell you Florida over BYU at the time that was scheduled. So, once again, I don't think it's scary to play BYU when you're playing a team that's better. Also, it's not scared to play BYU when you have scheduled to play BYU in 24, 25, 26, 27, and 28. All those upcoming years outside of the 23 season, you are going to be playing BYU. So I once again, Sammy, I just don't and, see how that's scared. And 27 and 28 were added on to the end of the contract mm -hmm. to void out the two years that Utah was going to play Florida. Yeah. So it's not even like Utah's scared. Like Utah said, okay, so we have Florida on the line. And like yeah. like this Mark Harlan like got on his little phone and he called Tom Homo. He said, Tom, can we push these last two games to 2027 and 2028? I have Florida on the line and they want to play us. And guess what? Both parties were okay with it. So they tacked it mm -hmm. on the end. If Utah was scared, the whole series would have been canceled. Exactly. The whole series would have been canceled. They would have said, we're not playing BYU ever again. That's not happening. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Sorry, not sorry. They would. That's what would have happened. But Utah mm -hmm. said, no, we'll, we're going to keep our, our end of the bargain, and we will add those two games to the end of the contract. And I think, again, going back to the Big 12, I have much more interest now in Utah, BYU, as them as a Big 12 member than I ever did as Utah and BYU as BYU as an independent member. Yeah. Because... If Utah lost to BYU and they were independent, especially when the college football playoff started, you, that screws Utah over big yeah. time if you lose to them. But now, if you lose to them and they're in the Big 12, you lose to a Power 5 opponent. That doesn't mm -hmm. carry as much weight to the committee than if you lost to an independent team. But there's like an asterisk to independent because if you lost to Notre Dame, then like that's like, that's like yes. fine. But like... I have much more desire to watch this game now with Pac-12, Big 12 than mm -hmm. I ever did with it as being Pac-12 independent. Well, I agree. And like we said, too, hopefully the, I would I would like the series to be more competitive overall. I and mean, once again, Utah dominates at all time. If you are talking about anything where one team leads 65 to – I forgot to grab what the number is – 65 to – uh, 30, like 62 to 35. That is a dominating series. I would much prefer to be more back and forth. Like mm -hmm. we've kind of started to see the Ohio state Michigan rivalry shift a little bit more. So that's one thing there. The last thing we are going to talk about as it pertains to BYU, you talk, cause I do want to get to Dalton Kincaid in a second, but first is we're just talking about the whole big brother, little brother thing. Once again, Utah has been the better team for the past few seasons. So if mm -hmm. they would have played in 2022 and that game more than likely would have been played at Rice Eccles Stadium. Number one, even if BYU, even if Utah did have to go down and play um, at BYU, it still would have been considered an upset if BYU won. So once again, why are these things being considered upset if you are little brother? That's where it doesn't make sense to me. Mm -hmm. And I just look at, once again, Utah finished the season better. They beat more high-quality opponents. So I absolutely think they would have beaten them in 2022. It was an overall better Utah team. And 2023 is not different to me. Cam, Cam rising over Keaton Slovis all day, obviously. That roster, top mm -hmm. to bottom, we've seen where Utah's ranked in the preseason stuff. The recruiting talent that Utah is currently bringing, they're bringing in a higher level right now. Once again, this list is supposed to be as big brother, little brother as it pertains to right now. I understand you are always going to include some of the history in that. That does have to matter somewhat. But mm -hmm. once again, there's not trends when it comes to that BYU history. There's outliers. There's one national championship. And you already laid out kind of how that was a weird one. There's one Heisman win. So once again, it's not a team known for producing Heisman mm -hmm. winners. That's where all these things have to be factored in. And once again, I just go back to 
yes, BYU won the most recent game they played, and I give them credit for that. Utah was the better team at the end of the 2021 season, and I believe if they had played last year and if they were playing this year, Utah, I believe they would win both games. But, mm -hmm. Sammy, there's no doubt in my mind, and I don't think anyone would disagree with this, Utah would be favored in both those games. Yeah, and past shouldn't overweigh present. That's mm -hmm. my exactly. other thing is because – if Ty Detmer jogged out onto that field today and played for BYU, I'm pretty sure Utah would still beat them. Mm -hmm. If because if you're think if you're if you want to do pass versus like if you're talking like whole history, if you put together like the greatest BYU team of all time, like mm -hmm. of players from all the history of BYU, and you yeah. put together a team of the greatest Utes of all time, I still would put my money on the Utah on the Utah team. Yeah, I would need to do more research than on the on the all time team stuff, but I, I mean, I could definitely see because because if you think about it, you have back. you'd have probably have Alex Smith versus Ty Detmer at quarterback, mm -hmm. running back like for Utah, you have a plethora of guys you can pick from everyone from yeah. Matt Asiata all the way down to Zach Moss. Plus, yeah. you can factor in um, Sammy. You're giving me a good podcast idea for a future episode, by the way. Yeah, if you want me to come back <laughs> to talk about it, I gladly will. It's I have thought fun. about this. I have mm -hmm. thought about an all-time great Utah team. I it has sometimes I lay in bed and I just said, "What would a tight end room with Alex Smith, or what would a what a what would a passing room look like with Alex Smith, yeah. Steve Smith, and Dalton Kincaid? Like, what would that look like?" But anyways, um, past shouldn't outweigh present. I think, and mm -hmm. like, yeah, does BYU have the most recent win? Yeah, but I honestly think that, especially rosters this way this year. Utah from top to bottom looks like, ugh, like on paper, looks like a much better team than BYU. BYU has so many moving pieces at this point. You have Keaton Slovis, who's on his third team in his career. Um, you have a brand new defensive coordinator down there. You don't know how players are going to adapt to that, adapt to that situation. And it's been, it's been proven that, and like you've seen that, it usually takes a year or two for guys to finally fully understand a new coordinator system before. Yes success happens um they're in their first year in the big 12 like their players already to a certain extent were undersized when they played utah them versus so the the byu players now versus oklahoma this year mm. they are going to look like jv some yeah. of them just they're, they're going to be undersized they're going to be smaller they're not going to be as athletic at certain positions so i think I think, honestly, I think Utah would beat them because Utah's finally at that point where they can recruit in the Pac-12 and recruit super well. Like, yeah. recruiting, signing the highest class ever in program history this year. It's looking really good so far this year with, like, especially with the building block that is Isaac Wilson as your quarterback commit. Exactly. Like, you, it's just, it's, it's just, it's so interesting that that, that pass is outweighing present in this situation. And then the biggest thing is, well, they won most recently, so that means they're that Utah's little brother. Yeah, I I don't I don't I don't see that. I would look more at the overall like all time record, and that still says it's yeah. Because like you said too, like history, ha it has to matter, but it can't be the end all be all. And especially we're talking about the recent history. Mm -hmm. That is what we are focusing on when you're talking about who's the better right now. Don't just take, if you just take one sample from a huge thing of data, that is not an accurate estimate of what that sample and that size of data overall indicates. That is what we are saying. And overall, when you look at the long-term history, even the recent histories, especially mm -hmm. in not just the small things, the individual accolades, what overall makes a stronger program. That is where I feel like Utah wins out overall. And uh, Sam, we do have to get out of here in a second, but really quick, I do want to shout out Dalton Kincaid, who's been making noise in Bill's mini camp. He has Von Miller earned praise. If you're going to earn praise from a former Super Bowl MVP and one of the best pass rushers of the past 20 years we have seen in Von Miller, I think it's incredible. And he just simply said, this Dalton Kincaid kid is insane. Now we know how good Dalton is. But also, mm -hmm. like, I, I didn't think in just OTAs and like a mini, or excuse me, in mini camp, he would already be get Vaughn. Like, this kid is insane. Like, that just shows how incredible Dalton's already made the transition. And he could be capable of a monster year if he's already earning praise like that from one of the most respected players in the NFL. Well, yeah. And there was also that tweet that came out from inside practice a couple weeks previously where they were like, he hurdled some guy and I'm, he just, every, he was just dominating. And everyone yeah. was like, doing Dalton stuff. Nice. Everyone was like, Are, yeah, oh, here it is. I found it. I just had to look. Uh, he's been running with the first teams during 11 on 11s, and he reportedly hauled in a 20-yard post corner and then moments later followed it up with the highlight of the day, a 40-yard touchdown catch after toasting the defense through the seam. That is great. It's, gr it's great to see someone like Dalton getting this, especially 
knowing how long his process was and like how he Utah was one of his only offers when he came out of the portal. Like it's just it just proves that Utah is as is probably the premier program at developing talent and just putting them into positions where they can dominate in the NFL, where they can be getting praise from Von Miller saying that he's impressive and insane and and all these other things. And uh, he honestly, even if I wasn't didn't cover him when he played here, I would honestly have him on my short list for potential offensive rookie of the year. Like exactly, how can you he's explain just, with Josh Allen with the Buffalo Bills? It's it's a completely logical pick, and people outside of Utah are definitely saying that. Well, and especially with this, with the uncertainty of what's like the whole Stefan Diggs situation, like, is he like, what's, is he unhappy? What's going on? I know that's a sore subject for you. Um, it's just what but... I'm, used, I'm used to as a Vikings fan. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I said that. I was like, yeah. you're probably used to this, but like, I think, and let's say, let's say Stefan's like, I want to be, I'm trade. I want to be gone, but whatever. Then that leaves like, that leaves Gabe Davis, Dalton. Yeah. And that, like, honestly, if, if Stefan's gone, like, that's actually probably best case scenario for, for Dalton. Because that is more targets for him. And exactly. so I think I, I, I'm just, it makes my, it makes my heart happy to see Dalton, like, get these, these praises, especially because, like, just as a person outside of football, he is one of the, the greatest people I've ever talked to. He's so kind. He's so everything. So, yeah, I'm, I'm so happy for him. I love, I love him. I love his, I love his game. I'm just so excited to see him play. We are both fired up for Dalton. It's going to be exciting to see what he can Ooh. do. And uh, it, it just it's exciting any time this time of year when you're getting closer to mm-hmm. football season, when you have OTAs, when you're it's just around the corner. And unfortunately, BYU and Utah won't be playing each other this no, season. But damn. That mean, <laughs> but that mean the discussion isn't going to rage on, I'm sure. So we'll be interacting with you guys in the comments for sure. Let us know what you think about this whole debate about Utah and BYU as big brother, little brother conversation that big game boomer has started overall, but that is going to do it for us here on lockdown Utes this week. Thanks to Sammy Moore for joining us. If you guys want more of Sammy, make sure you guys follow her at Twitter at S underscore more 99 and head over to Ute zone to give her stuff a read. Sammy, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Sorry to all the BYU fans. I offended. <laughs> So. Hey, it's uh, Al. I'm not apologizing, but I definitely offended some too. So, that I, you know, you know what? <laughs> if you can, if I can take it. If if you can't dish it out, I don't. I don't think you can. Exactly. If you can't take it. Don't dish it out. That's my. That's my personal philosophy. So. 100%. So basically, if you guys have problems with us, we'll see you in the Twitter. <laughs> 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 Today's edition of Locked On Utes, but we'll see you next week. Have a good one.